Hi, my name is uh, Cody Hosterman. I'm the technical director at Pure Storage for VMware Solutions. So what I want to talk about today is um, really how virtual volumes actually unlocks your data mobility um, more than really anything before, right, in a, from a VMware ecosystem. Um, really, it, there's some lock-ins from VMFS, right, and what virtual volumes does besides the VM granularity and the, uh, the storage policy-based management, which is all great, right, it also allows you to really move your data where you want it to be, whether it's in VMware, whether it's on-premises in some other hypervisor or physical servers or even in the cloud, right? And this is really what vVols unlocks. So first off, let's, what is vVols? It's an important thing. Now I could spend four hours talking about this, right? But at a very high level, it's storage policy-based management of VM granular storage, right? So every virtual machine you have, every virtual disk is a volume on your array, right? Uh, and it can be configured and controlled from VMware via storage policy-based management. Right, so your underlying storage provider tells VMware, hey, this is the features I support. Replication, snapshotting via policy, retention policies, or whatever, it could be RAID, you know, anything. And in VMware, you create storage policies that, create, that creates that storage as needed on demand, right? And it can retain compliance over time. If someone reconfigures your storage on your array, VMware will know about it, say, hey, this VM or this virtual disk is no longer in compliance, right? So that's the 40 billion foot view of virtual volumes. All right, but what it really unlocks, right, is, is your data, right? Because of that granularity of the storage, every virtual disk is actually a raw volume on that array. Right. So first off, let's talk a little bit about the issue with VMFS, right? Uh, VMFS is great, right? From a scalability perspective, it's been wonderful recently, especially with the VAI primitives. Um, many VMs, very large data stores, many hosts accessing the same data store, right? And that's been great for a while, but there are some limitations around it, right? Every virtual disk is a file on that file system. It's a VMDK, right, on that file system. And so how do you share a VMDK with something else? Uh, whether it be a physical server, maybe where your production is, or maybe it's another hyper, uh, hypervisor, or maybe it's something in the cloud, right? You have to convert it, or you have to use host-based features to copy that, which may or may not be particularly efficient or even possible, right? And also copying entire data stores has always been an issue, right? Restoring from them or copying data stores, there's a whole process you have to go through, right? So dev test with a VMFS snapshot on an array. What do you have to do, right? Well, you present the array snapshot or volume or whatever, then you do the rescan and then you resignature it and then you bring it up and it's ready to go, right? Not a lot of steps, but it's quite a few that you need to script around, right? Or use tools to automate it, right? And if you want to get out an individual virtual machine or a virtual disk from it, the process is the same. Present the snapshot, Resignature it, uh, pull out the individual VMDK, right, or add it to whatever virtual machine, right? And there are a lot of tools that help automate this and whatnot, but it's still a process that needs to be done. So the other options, right, is of course dev test with um, RDMs, right? Oh, if I use an RDM, I can connect that to anything else, right? Um, a physical server, or some other hypervisor, or copy it to the cloud or whatever via some mechanism. But then you lose all the benefits of the VMware storage stack, right? Deploy from template, cloning, all kinds of stuff like that. Migration, how do you migrate an REM to another, you, don't, you can't really do it without host-based tools. Like it's, it's, it's a bit of a problem. Right, so you lose a lot of the benefits one way or another. And this is one of the things that virtual volumes offers. So a very important thing to understand about virtual volumes that often gets missed is that they are not formatted with VMFS. Right? There is a config vVol that holds the configuration information of your VM, VMX file, VMware.log. But every virtual disk you add is actually a physical volume on the array, right? It is a direct volume, but it still goes to the virtual SCSI stack. So you can use the benefits of VMware, right? Deploy from template, cloning, migration, but you get the ability to manage and configure that volume on the array on a very granular basis, right? Set replication on that volume, set snapshotting on that volume, restore just that volume. But the only file system on that data vVol or data vVols or whatever your guest puts on it, right? NTFS, ext4, xfs, whatever, right? So what does this open up, right? Well, the one thing to also understand is that there's no proprietary portion between VMware and that vVol either. The SCSI interactions between VMware and that volume, all T10 standards, right? Yes, they're presented through what they call a protocol endpoint, but all that means is the protocol endpoint is what T10 calls an administrative logical unit and a vVol is a subsidiary logical unit, which basically means it's a subline. So your PE is LUN 255, your vVol is LUN 255 6, right? The only special part of that connection is that it's a subline, right? And that's only how it's special to that host, 
you could take that same vVol and present it to a physical server with a regular LUN ID at the same time, right? vVol snapshots. When you right click on a VM today and take a snapshot, it's that Delta VMDK file, right? And that's a whole performance penalty, a copy on write, all that stuff, right? In a vVol world, when you right click on a VM and create a VMware snapshot, it creates an array-based snapshot, right? And so you can then manage directly inside of VMware of restores of that snapshot to that virtual disk, creating new ones, deleting them, or copying them to any other VM. Right? It's a regular volume. It's th those snapshots are no longer that copy on write thing. They're array-based snapshots. You're running from the source. The snapshot is what's holding the deltas. Unlike with VMware snapshots, traditional on VMFS, you're running from that delta VMDK file, not the source. Right? So this allows you to take those snapshots and present them and use them anywhere else. Right? There's a lot of interesting use cases um, that can be put around that. Right. Um, S3 offloads. A lot of arrays are introducing features to offload snapshots to S3 into the cloud or to NFS for either dev test or archival or whatever. Right? One of the features we're adding on um, from Pure Storage right, um, is offload to S3. So you can take that and either archive it to S3 or Glacier or something like that, or take those snapshots and export them as open objects that can be leveraged inside of something like EBS. Right? So this allows you to do cloud bursting or dev test. Um, or just workload mobility between public and private, leveraging vVols and storage policy-based management and the array technologies that can allow that. Right? There is no proprietary file system anymore, so it opens up to whatever you want to do with your data is what's limited by the array hosting it and whatever the guest supports, right? what you're putting on that. Right? So there's a lot of benefits around, the, around moving the vVols. First of all, how do you move there? Storage emotion. Once you storage emotion, you get all the benefits of vVols, right? There's no offline procedure to move there. Um, an RDM, how do you make it a vVol? Well, if your array supports vVols, you disconnect it as an RDM, reconnect it as a vVol. It's a vVol, and now it's in the virtual SCSI stack, but you can do everything else you're doing with it. Same scripts, even, right? The serial number of that volume doesn't change. Right? So there's a lot of cool benefits of, of moving these things into vVols and being able to move your data where you need. So in an interesting way, one of the, one of the fears about virtual volumes is that there was more vendor lock-in with Right? In reality, VMware is actually opening your data up right? because you no longer have VMDKs, you no longer have VMFS, you just have volumes that are connected to sub -lines, right? so you get that additional benefit. So as one, of the, one of the major benefits always discussed about vVols right, is that storage policy-based management is even the snapshot granularity, right? the compliance checking. Um, but I think strategically, those are all great features. I love them and they solve a lot of problems you're all probably experiencing every day. Right, but strategically, I think vVols from the future of VMware storage is really the place to go to to be able to allow your data to move wherever you want it to be so you can do whatever you want to do with it. Right? You're, not, you're not strapped down by the file system on it and then having to do some kind of weird conversion or something like that. Right? <clears throat> so, I mean, overall, that's what I want to talk about. Not very long. There's a real quick discussion about how vVols open up your data and how, you can, how moving to that paradigm through simple storage emotion. It will allow you to do what you want with the data you have. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.